Welcome to another episode of Together We Can, the podcast where we come together to explore topics of interest to support students and families in our amazing CUNA school district. I'm your host, Wendy Johnson, superintendent of this amazing school district. Today, we are discussing a very serious topic, teen mental health and suicide. Recently, the Valley has seen several young people commit suicide, and in May, the Surgeon General said the United States has a public health crisis with an epidemic of loneliness and isolation. In our podcast with our secondary school counselors, they shared how much they appreciate a new free resource for our families and their children called the Student and Family Assistance Program, which is offered by BPA Health. We're talking with some experts today about warning signs in youth and free help available to our families. We're joined today by Jenny Brown and Ariel Henwood of BPA Health. Welcome to both of you, and thank you for joining us today. Um, Jenny, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Jenny Brown. I've been with BPA Health for probably a total of about seven years now. Um, My education and uh, career path has been in mental health, and I get to work with all the schools and provide this amazing resource to our your students and families. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for being here today so we can all learn more about it. Thanks for having us. Get more help to people who need it. Ariel, how about you? Yeah, so my name's uh, Ariel Henwood. I'm a licensed master's social worker. I've been with BPA Health for about six and a half years now, and I've taken on a lot of different roles, both emerged in the clinical, but also helping build and implement the Student and Family Assistance Program. Um, So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you both for joining us, helping our CUNA families and um, children and and really staff, too. It helps the resources that you help provide help them be able to teach kids. So I appreciate that. So um, before we talk about some of the warning signs in our youth, Um, I know this is a heavy topic as we're thinking about the holidays, but an important topic as we're thinking about the holidays. Can you share how the student and family assistance program works? So I'm a mom, Mm -hmm. maybe has a concern about her son. Yeah. How does it work? So there are several ways that... um, a family or a student can be referred to the Student yeah. Family Assistance Program. Um, the only criteria uh, to meet you know, qualification for the program is that the household has a student enrolled in, in your case, uh, the CUNA School District. But as a whole for Ada County, it would be, you know, Boise School District, yeah. West Ada. Um, so there just needs to be one child K through 12 enrolled in the school district. And if that is happening, then yeah. the student, their parent, guardians, and any siblings they have up to the age of 26 Um, are eligible for free counseling. That's wonderful. That can be in-person counseling. It can be virtual through our partnership with BetterHelp Now. Um, The virtual needs to be 13 and older Uh um, to utilize, but it's text, chat, phone, um, all of those options in case, you know, they need to, you know, do it from somewhere else or they're just more comfortable with that. Um, But it provides the support to the family uh, to create a healthy environment as a whole so that the student can be successful in school and, you know, overall mental well-being. They can get referred by their counselor. Mm -hmm. Um, Each school should have uh, wallet cards and flyers and things on hand that if they notice a kid struggling, they can give them this information. Um, Or if they're contacting parents, um, they can notify them that this resource is available now. And if they use virtual help, we can guarantee an appointment within 48 hours, which is incredible. It is. And they have, I believe it's 50 languages um, that they speak. And if they want in person or they hear about the program, but maybe they're not referred, um, they can call in to our service navigators and they'll actually assist the family like every step of the way by calling, making the appointments on their behalf, doing follow ups, um, just to make the system a little bit easier to yeah. navigate. Yeah. So, and they can get on the website, um, they can really be referred and access it through a multitude of avenues from teachers to neighbors, you know, other kids. 
Um, and again, it's available for any student in their family, K through 12. And we'll definitely make sure it's on our website as a resource because, again, we're going into the holidays. So right. our more traditional ways of connecting families with a counselor or a teacher when we're on break, they right. can access them through the resources online like you described. Yeah. And it is really important to note that this is available even when school is not yeah. in session. Yeah. So any breaks, summer, weekends, um, we also have a 24-hour staffed crisis line that's seven days a week if somebody's experiencing that. And the cool thing about this program, in addition to the counseling, is there's additional community resources on the website. So they can get financial and legal assistance. Oh, wow. um, they can get discounts for vacations. Mm -hmm. They can find um, TED Talks and articles about parenting. Um, they can, you know, make a, a will, yeah. you know, on yeah. there. There's just a lot of resources, but um, the five free counseling sessions available per incident are you know, available right now. They can use it today. Wonderful. So, wonderful. Yeah. Would you add anything to that, Ariel? Yeah. So I am the service navigation manager. Oh, okay. So I am managing, so you know a little bit about this. Yeah. yeah. I'm managing the team that um, the parents and things are calling into. We also have other ways that we can be contacted, email, texting. We did just launch chat. Oh, great. Um, so that is a feature when they log in to access resources. There's a chat feature, too, that's now available. Even if you just have simple questions about how it works or unsure, yeah. we can help navigate through that. Now, if a, if a student were to access it, is it something that you contact the parents then? What, yeah. what does that look like? So legally, yeah. anybody under the age of 18 needs parental consent. Yes. So typically we would instruct them to call, have their parents call in um, to verify that consent and they to don't set up the benefit yeah, initially. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. So, so thank you for explaining the way it works. And it sounds pretty easy. Lots yes. of ways to, to get connected. And like I said, we'll make sure people have the information um, on our website and obviously in the newsletters that we send out. Um, talking, kind of shifting, you know, we started with the benefit um, with all of the conversations around mental health and particularly um, worrying about our young people being isolated, you know, some of the online bullying, some of the things that may cause children to maybe think about harming themselves. What are some of those warning signs that young people um, who might be struggling with thoughts of suicide um, what do they have? What are those warning signs look like? Mm -hmm. If I'm a parent or a friend or a neighbor, yeah. what would I might see? Yeah, I think it's important to note that these warning signs of suicide affect everybody. Yeah. And, but some of the things that you can identify is um, those more upfront things like talking or writing about death or dying or suicide. Um being unable to sleep or sleeping all the time, those kinds of things, changes in behaviors, um, hopelessness, feeling like they're trapped and there's no way out. Um, even uh, more upfront things like uh, making threats of hurting yeah. themselves or wanting to kill themselves, um, seeking access to means, um, things like that. Also, uh, giving away like very prized possessions mm -hmm. or things that they truly care about, um, trying to give them away or not interested anymore and stuff. So. Yeah, so a, a disconnect um, mm -hmm. often or a, a, a way to, um, I guess, maybe not say it, but say it through actions is what you what we would see yeah. a change in a person, mm -hmm. in, a, in a child. What, what would a parent do? If they see this or worry or concern, what would you tell a parent or what do you tell a parent when they contact you about these concerns? Yeah, so any concern, even the slightest hint of a concern, definitely reach out um, to a professional or um, call us. Things, um, it can be really hard to see somebody going through something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got to talk about it. We got to yeah. ask about it. We have yes. to ask what's going on and it can be really hard, but we do need to be direct um, yeah. if we do feel that they are having thoughts of suicide and asking them the question of, you know, are you thinking about suicide or mm -hmm. are you thinking about killing yourself? Yeah. I also want to add that 
um, I think, you know, it is scary and it's hard mm-hmm. to be direct, but mm-hmm. it's important to be direct so that you're clear. Because if you say something like, are you feeling like you're going to hurt yourself? In their mind, they're like, no, I'm going to kill myself. Right. So they'll say no, you know, because those are two different right. things. Right. And also to remember asking somebody if they are considering suicide or thinking about that does not then make them want to commit right. suicide. I think sometimes people are afraid if they mention it, it's going to cause like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Right. Yes, I want to. Yeah, it's so, one of the big myths out there, right? Right, right. Yeah. The, just being direct and um, to the child even, yeah. you know, especially. Like it doesn't even have to be a counselor where you wait and then talk to a counselor as yeah. their parent to say, look, hey, we have these concerns, notice things are going on. Yeah. You know, are you considering suicide or are you thinking about killing yourself and that's scary to say sometimes you know but that's the best way to address things one of the things to keep in mind too is when you're asking the question remaining calm yeah yeah and uh i'm also a mental health first aid instructor Uh so i help teach some of the skills, the noticing skills and things like that. And one of the analogies they use is kind of like a a duck on water, where on the outside you're very calm and collected, but inside you might be panicking. Yeah. And that's... You're paddling fast, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's scary. Yeah. Yeah, It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary. So being direct from a a parent perspective, not being afraid to say the word, are you considering killing yourself, Mm -hmm. um, is, is important so that we are... We get the answer that we may need to to have. So we have that answer. Let's say a student says, "Yes, I'm. I've been thinking about killing myself." Um, what do you tell a parent to do next? I would say connect to a, a professional help. Um, easy as calling nine eight eight right in that moment and getting somebody on the line and talking through it. Um, the next question to kind of ask after that, too, is have you thought about how you would do it? Yeah. Um, that kind of will help also direct, but just when in doubt, connect to yeah. a professional to get that support. And again, we have that crisis line that's seven days a week, you know, 365. Yeah. So even if maybe the parent forgets that 988 is available or they forget about, you know, the resources they have in the moment because it's such a shocking thing to hear. There are resources available that they can talk through things and kind of, you know, professionally evaluate um, where the individual is at, like, you know, what the intervention needs to be um, in that moment. Yeah. And it might even be something that if I'm I'm still uncertain how to have that conversation, Mm -hmm. they could call and practice with somebody about how to have that um, intervention, you know, that conversation that's direct. Because I think sometimes with our young people, especially teens, it's hard to be that direct. Right. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you for that information. Um, How um, we talked a little bit about how how parents might have that conversation, but. What are some other signs like people on the outside, you know, like a, a, a friend, a neighbor, um, an educator, what what might they see? Would it be the same sort of signs or are there other things that they might see that maybe a parent wouldn't? Mm-hmm. Well, I think the, one of the important things is that parents and teachers and other trusted adults, even friends of their teens are talking together and um working together to make sure that somebody's safe. There's a lot of steps that you can take um, beforehand to recognize that someone might need help. Um, Being present in, I know that seems like something that would be simple, but oftentimes we're so, our minds are just running on all the things we're doing. So um, when I was thinking about this, you know, if we have teachers that are doing while lunches are going yeah. on and they're out uh, monitoring, just really being in the moment and using their noticing skills and watching what's going on, looking for um, significant changes in behaviors, uh, things that are outside of a mm-hmm. teen, their person's like day-to-day uh, regular pattern. Um, something like, you know, maybe you notice a kid who's always um, 
doing arts and being mm-hmm. creative and drawing. And maybe you notice that they haven't been drawing for a few days yeah. or a week. Um, and then just stepping in and checking in with them. Okay, Jenny, you were going to um, say something. I was going to add to what Ariel said about sort of like the lunchroom thing, you yeah. know, noticing kids that are isolating. Mm-hmm. Are they eating by themselves? Um, even something it, which seems odd because it seems positive is if somebody has is typically kind of down and quiet and then all of a sudden they're like, outgoing and elated Mm. and social that can be a warning sign too because they may have made the decision in their mind to do this and they feel relief and they feel happy yeah so like she said a a significant change in somebody's behavior even if it's the opposite it it looks positive you know if that's atypical for that particular student or child that's something to ask about as well yeah thank you for giving that other example as we know we have different personalities out there and and it's really looking for that change Mm -hmm. in what is a typical behavior for that particular individual so thank you what about um differences and warning signs between like different age groups and demographics? Because I think most of us tend to think teens, young people, young adults, when we talk about self-harm, but there are other Mm -hmm. um, age groups that Mm -hmm. also, especially in today's world. Yeah. um, Yeah. And it really uh, does occur in all socioeconomic yeah. groups, all yeah. demographics, all of that. Um, I think one thing that's important to remember in teens specifically, um, it's really, it can be harder to recognize some things because of just the the physical and the developmental mm. changes yeah. that they're going through in, um, you know, the physical aspect of their bodies and all of that, yeah. their mood changes and things yes. like that. And um, you know, at that stage, they're trying to figure out who they are. They're trying to figure out where they belong. And so that can make things a little bit difficult. But the warning signs and stuff are still pretty the much same. the same across mm-hmm. demographics and yeah. age groups. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I used to teach at the high school, taught a little bit of middle school age. And it is. It's right. It's sometimes yeah. hard to know yeah. because of just the different challenges that, that kids at that age have. So... One of the things that, you know, we're, why we're doing this podcast is to help families, to help children, and, and really to help our staff, you know, make connections and, and demystify some of right. the, uh, I guess, myths that might be out there on a variety of different topics. Um, how can we work to reduce the stigma surrounding mental health issues, um, particularly around young people? I think a couple of years ago, we had a lot of people angry about this topic, you know, um, and, and a lot of schools and mental health services were kind of treading lightly about how do we help help children? How do we do that? Mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing is talking about it, yeah. having it on display where it's not this scary thing. Like mental health is for everybody. Yeah. If you have a brain, then, yeah. then you have mental health. Now, yeah. whether that is sometimes stressful and you need some assistance with that, yeah. it should be normalized like if you break your leg mm-hmm. and you go to the doctor, right? Um, so I think it's important over and over and in, in lots of different avenues through video, through you know things like this, mm-hmm. podcasts, newsletters, teachers talking about it. The more comfortable everyone gets about talking about yeah. mental health as if it's you know, a normal thing to talk about, which it is, um, I think the easier it is. And, yeah. and then kids aren't, you know, as reluctant to say, hey, something's going on here, or at least talk to their friends about it, you yeah. know, um, and maybe not their parents because teens and, you yeah. know, how that goes, that, you know, they're not always <laughs> the most forthcoming, right, but right. friends and teachers and counselors um, not making it a shameful, hidden, mm-hmm. secretive thing. You know, I think we need to have open conversation and education and um, overcome the myths yeah. of, you know, if you mention it, then somebody's going to have it happen. Like, right. that's that's just not the case. Yeah. You know, somebody's not going to develop depression because you ask them if they're okay or feeling depressed. Right. Right. Somebody's not going to jump to wanting to you know, complete suicide because you ask them, are you feeling, yeah. you know, like you want to die? That's yeah. that's just not accurate. Yeah. And I think people 
have stigma because they're just not aware. They just don't know yeah. or they're scared because it's a scary topic. Yeah. It can be heavy. Um, we so kind of grow up in our in our country with this idea of buck up. Right. Yeah, right. I was just right. going to say. Put your boots on. Exactly. <laughs> roll up your sleeves. You got this. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think it's important for everybody to uh, recognize your own beliefs about mm-hmm. it and what you grew up in and what you saw surrounding and just have that understanding but and just get informed and be open-minded about it. Ask questions. And um, I think talking about it, changing the way that we talk about it um, and things like that can be really helpful. What's something you wished every person knew about mental health? I really wish that it was just, like, to me, it's so normal, right? Yeah. You know, and I know that, like, our education and we work in it, so we see, like, on the spectrum. Um, I think everybody benefits from being aware of their own mental mm-hmm. health, and it changes. It goes yeah. up and down. Like, some weeks you're doing really great, yeah. and other weeks are a struggle. And so I just wish that um, people knew the resources. There are a lot of resources yeah. available. And so I think it's important to kind of seek those out and ask others for help and realize, like, it doesn't mean – nothing's wrong with you because you don't feel happy all the time. Right. Like, that's just not – That's a myth that's, in and yeah, of itself. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, yeah. even if you think somebody is happy all the time and they have, like, no struggles, that's not real life. People yeah. do struggle. Um, and – yeah, and not to compare themselves. It's hard with teens and yeah. social media, right? Because yeah. everybody posts their highlight reel. Nobody's right. posting the stuff that's hard or that they're embarrassed about. And yeah. so if you're feeling down and you're scrolling and you yeah. see all these smiles and friends and you're feeling isolated, you know, it just to remember that that's not – the full picture right. of somebody's life and, you know, everyone struggles. It's okay to get help. It's okay to ask for assistance. Mm-hmm. And just because you get therapy doesn't mean you're going to need it forever. Right. You might just need, you know, a little help over this bump. You get some skills and, you know, then you know how to kind of tackle yeah. that down the road. So just that it's it really should just be as normal as – you know, going to the doctor when you have a cold, nobody's yeah. like ashamed of that. You're right. not ashamed to like go to your doctor because your throat hurts. Yeah. You know? So just kind of realizing there's nothing shameful in asking for help. In fact, it's, you know, probably the bravest and strongest thing right. you can do. And life saving. Yeah. And yeah. to talk to your friends and your peers and your family members and and be supportive of them. And if they're struggling, help with resources mm-hmm. like, hey, I've been there too. And, and just normalize it. Yeah. Yeah. I think building off of that, there's a lot of prevention, yeah. preventative things that can be done. Simple yeah. things like, you know, if we compare it to taking a sick day yeah. because you're physically sick or ill, um, when you're feeling very overwhelmed or stressed, it's okay to take a mental health day too. Like that's really important, I think, to um, prevent it from getting any more, any worse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. That that's again why we're doing this. We want to demystify and and make sure that people have the help they need. Right. So we have healthy people in our community and um, leading our children um, so that they can access everything that's available to them, you know, from, from, and not, not, not be um, disconnected. That's my biggest worry, I think, is the disconnect that happens when you, when you mentioned that social media piece is, that is not real life. No, it's not. (laughs) Not even close. No. Um, uh, but it is part of life. Right. We have happy parts of our life, too. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, what's You mentioned some of the, you know, normalizing it, making this, you know, making us talk about our mental health. What are some other important steps we can take, you know, individually as a society to address, address youth suicide and promote mental well-being? Yeah, I think... It's really important. Um, I thought a lot about there's so many things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> narrow it down. But it's really important that we get the teens and the youth involved. Yeah. And we hear their voice and we listen to them. And they are also the ones that are out there talking about it. 
somebody is going to have a better outcome if they have some kind of connection with someone who's talking to them about it. And that could be as simple as someone that's the same age. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things also uh, early intervention, yeah. talking about it, um, modeling it as well yourself as a parent um, or a teacher. Yeah, it's okay to tell your kids, man, I'm having a tough day, yeah. you know, or I feel sad today, or, you know, really verbalizing um, and normalizing it, like Ariel said. And in these counseling sessions, like the great thing about this program, which is a resource yeah. available, you don't have to wait until something's right. wrong, right? right? Like if somebody's just needs you know, somebody to talk a wellness to. Check, right, right, exactly. Yeah. Like, use the service. It's there for you. Yeah. And at the, like, my son did counseling for years, and a lot of times he was fine and didn't really have anything to talk about, and they would work on, like, budgeting or yeah. other goals. Yeah. Like, it doesn't yeah. have to be something traumatic and then you go. If, if something, you know, you just want somebody to talk to, to work through maybe a small problem yeah. or to get, you know— yeah, Another usually, usually we can get over things with yeah. just our friends or family, mm-hmm. talking about it with them and getting the support from them. But some things may last longer and affect us mm-hmm. and start to affect us in all areas, in job, school. And that's the time where you can get that professional um, outsider's perspective mm-hmm. and just lay it all out there and um, try to see it in a different light and get some help in that way. I think when you look at the student family assistance program, that you know that's five sessions per incident that's available. But some things may you know help with just one or two times. Right. right. You don't right. have to use, you know, all use it all up. Yeah. 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 Sometimes talking to somebody who doesn't know us mm-hmm. at all yeah. is helpful because they are truly the most objective person in the room or online or mm-hmm. however we access that. And with um, the Student Family Assistance Program, the messaging is also important that it's confidential. Yes. So um, whoever accesses it, whether it's the students or their families, we're not reporting back to the district, you know, John Smith used this many sessions and this is what they talked about. It's, right. it's really bare minimum information um, that the service navigators collect and that's simply to be able to connect them with the right resource um but yeah it's confidential you can you can utilize it nobody has to know you utilized it um it'd be great if you used it and told other people that were struggling like hey this you know i use this you know and it was helpful um but if you know somebody's uncomfortable with that they don't they don't have to divulge you know that they even had counseling. Right, right. You know, when we think from a, um, a school setting, like we, we talk a lot about school safety. Mm-hmm. If you see something, say something, right? You know, when it comes to something not looking right or, you know, somebody writing something like a threat, you know, what's the equivalent in the mental health arena? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think when we look at mental health in mental well-being and we are seeing something that feels wrong um, or off, um, it doesn't mean that they need to go get professional help Mm -hmm. right away. It means just noticing, checking in with them, and making sure people know that you're available if they do want to talk or encourage them to talk to somebody that they do trust. Um, I think that's important too. I think it applies the same. You know, yeah. you see something, you say something, and, you know, hopefully you feel comfortable going to the person directly, um, but some kids don't, and, you know, maybe they feel more comfortable talking to a teacher and saying, hey, something feels, you know, off. Um, that's fine, too. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, just People noticing. aren't always ready. Right. Yeah. But just that act of, like, hey, somebody did notice right. that I'm they struggling. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. I care about you. Right. Yeah. Right. You're just not that, alone. Yeah. Yeah. Arm out. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we've talked a lot about supporting our children, our young adults, um, but this is also available to adults to get support. I'm I'm a mom at my wit's end. What do I do? I am um, maybe a, a couple who might be struggling with some 
whatever the topic is, this is available. This resource is available for adults. Absolutely. So not only through the counseling, right? They can receive their own counseling, but um, through the website, there's you know lots of articles and webinars and parenting skills and tips, and it even breaks it down by age. You know where you can how to talk to your preteen and different things like that. And then of course they can access the counseling for themselves too. And just you know it is hard being a parent. Of, yeah. of a kid any age, you know, you're yeah. trying to do everything right. And, you know, plus... And you're never going to do no, it all, and right? you're, 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 It's impossible. You're going to yeah. make mistakes. You're going to yeah. be at your wit's end. You're going to have moments, especially in their teens, where you don't know what to do. And it's scary. And, yeah, reach out. Like, the same thing that they would want for their kid to reach out to keep themselves safe and to, to feel support, um, that's there for them to take care of themselves as well. That, yeah, when we look at going for counseling, it's not just for an individual. There's also, you know, couples therapy yeah. that's available yeah. to see uh, marriage counseling, family therapy, you can yeah. go as a family and things like that too. Yeah, so. strengthens yeah. the relationship. And the other thing that's really great um, because – we have your EAP as well and the SFAP. Your teachers can utilize, like if your teachers oh. have kids in the district, yes. they can utilize their EAP for those sessions and then they can piggyback off. Oh, that's off. wonderful. And if they're, in, if they're in our network with EAP, most likely they're in our network with the SFAP. Okay. So um, they could potentially get like, you know, 10, 12, however many sessions Great. like in a row. Um, it doesn't take away and they can piggyback those. Yeah. So. Well, and you know, I've heard from some of our employees who've accessed our EAP, the digital resources mm -hmm. and the online, you know, services. And at first I was like, oh, how is that going to work? Mm -hmm. And it, and they've really liked it. Yeah. They've liked nice. being able to, to you know, that telehealth kind of concept through um, the counseling. There's so much texting when we look yeah. at utilization reviews. Um, and the cool thing is the majority of students are utilizing it. Yeah. There are families and parents, um, they're pretty similar, but it's nice to see the students using it and an array of things, yeah. in person, telephone, texting, we can see yeah. kind of all of that. And so they're meeting them where they're at, mm -hmm. you know, and teens are... Sometimes texting is easier. Yeah. I, I don't think I could do counseling yeah. through texting because yeah. that's yeah. a lot. But for them, you know. It, it works. Yeah, they're reaching out to somebody, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in a way that works for them. That's the exactly. goal. Yeah. Yeah, the goal is just healthy households, healthy yeah. families. You know, kids do better when the home environment is one that is healthy. So, yeah. And it's not you know, send the student off for counseling, but then mom and dad are struggling yeah. and we don't do anything about this. The student receiving counseling isn't yeah. going to have as big of a benefit if you don't address the stuff over here. Too. Right, right. Great. Would you remind everybody as we kind of close um, the podcast um, today, like remind us how to access um, this very wonderful benefit for families and students? Yeah. So there's lots of ways. I know we talked about it in the beginning a little bit, but um, students and or their parents can call the 833-935-3816 to get connected with um, a service navigator. And they don't have to know the process. They can just say, I heard about this with my school and her team will be able to you know, guide them along the way. They can also go to our website, which is brand new and right. filled with a lot of really great um, resources. And that is bpahealth.com. And then if they do forward slash, it's SFAP. So it's the acronym for Student Family Assistance Program. And they can log in. Um, they log in uh, by using their school district name. So they can say CUNA School District. Mm -hmm. They could say you know, CUNA school, there's yeah. a bunch of various, and then they just use that 833-935-3816 as the password. Okay. And that unlocks all of those other really great benefits. If they're struggling to get in there, please reach out on the website. There's a chat feature. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they can call. You can request the counseling yeah. through an online form. Yeah. yeah. If you don't want to call. Yeah. Where if you want to just handle it yourself, you can use the yeah. online form. You're, you don't want to 
have to call somebody, you can set it up yourself. And if they have the wallet cards at the schools, which they should, they, do. they yeah. can ask for one of those. And they've got QR codes. They can just scan them. Um, there's a lot of options. Um, but when in doubt, they can just give us a call and we're happy to get them connected right. with whatever services they're looking for. Because, you know, one of the things we hear from from parents whose kids are in crisis or maybe they're in crisis is there's long wait lines, mm-hmm. wait, waiting lists and, and counseling offices and different, especially in rural or, you know, somewhat rural areas, not that CUNA is rural anymore, but somewhat. Right. Um, and so the, the turnaround time that you have to get mm-hmm. access to help gives hope, right. I would think, to that I can get some help for my child or for myself, um, mm-hmm. because you said it was within 48 hours, so some the, sort of contact. Yeah, the yeah. telehealth um, through Better, better help. help Now yeah. is guaranteed within 48 hours. Um, the time to see an in-person counselor is really varies on yeah. the parent's need, right? Like yeah. the date, the time. Right. Um, but we do have a really vast network out, you know, in Ada County in general, of providers, and we check in with them on a regular basis to see kind of what their wait times are and make sure that we have the resources when they need it. Mm -hmm. And again, our service navigators can help them. So if they find like, hey, I'm having a hard time scheduling, I'm two weeks out or whatever, they can keep trying um, or connect them to you know, telehealth through mm-hmm. better. Great. Yeah. yeah, and our in-network providers do the telehealth too. Yep. So right. sometimes that can be a little bit more flexible sure. to maybe see them initially via telehealth, but right. then you've got your in-person appointment yeah. right. a few weeks later. Thank you guys for doing what you do to help families and students um, navigate this increasingly complex world. Um, you know, one of our kind of a separate but related topic, you know, we we talk about our students being future ready, mm-hmm. having strong mental health is a part of that, being yeah, good, absolutely. contributing citizen is a part of that. But why, what's the best thing about your job, what you do? Mm. There's, I, <laughs> so, many there's so many great I things. I see smiles on faces yes. right now that you love think, what you do. I yes. can tell. One of the things is working for a company that promotes mental health, not right. just for the community and the students and the programs we do, but for us as employees. Good. Yeah. So kind of modeling that behavior. Um, I My team is a really great team right now. They do such a good job um, trying to connect people. And then it's really good when we hear back from those that access it and we get those comments that it was really easy and um, that it really helped them. Yeah, and I love, I go to a lot of events um, all over the state, so I get to speak with parents directly Mm -hmm. or with schools directly, and like Ariel said, hearing from parents are like, oh, my son used this, it was amazing, like that feels really good. Um, You know, some people have some really sad stories, and it's nice to be able to like provide a real resource. They don't need insurance, they don't have to pay for anything. I know they're in great hands and that they're going to get, you know, some support And, yeah, I mean, we've seen it work. We know how valuable it is. And so that feels really good that you're helping somebody every day, Mm -hmm. every single day. We continue to want to hear the feedback. We want to make improvements where we can and Mm -hmm. and just build it to be a really great program. And, yeah. Thank you. You know, um, you have helped us be able to not be that person that's like, I wish I could help you. Right. Okay. You, we can actually say, here's help. Yeah, a real resource. Um, you know, we can do our part. Here's another partner mm-hmm. in, in helping you access whatever that is that you need um, to, to be happier, more um, content with um, where you are. So I really appreciate the partnership that we have. Great. Thank you both for the information you shared and the help you are providing students and families. I can tell just... Way, the way you talk about it, that you love helping people. And yeah. I'm, we're in the helping field. Too. Right. It's kind of fun to connect it's nice with other to like, helpers. Yeah, it's a it? partner yeah. and like build on yeah. something to, yeah. you know. And it's really great that the district cares this much, you know, yeah. for, for them to have this program, I think, is – you know, speaks volumes about their saying, your mental health is important to us. And we recognize that this is something that needs to be addressed. So I think it's really important to, you know, 
Central District Health and Ada County, all the districts as a whole, um, that they're so supportive and have this resource available because not everybody has done this yet, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Well, shout out to our counselors yeah, um, and incredible. social workers for um, getting the word out and connecting mm -hmm. um, families to this and to my awesome team here for connecting you with me yes. um, so we can have this conversation. Um, and I, I think I always want to end with hope. It gets better. It does. You're struggling today. It gets better. And it gets better because you have partners that will walk alongside you, people who love you, who care for you, who want you to be here, be here and be successful. So thank you for being those partners and helping the message. It does get better. Yeah. Thanks life, for getting life it is out. there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's <laughs> lots of you. good things ahead. And thank you to our listeners for joining us for this really important conversation. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with others. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to explore in future episodes, we've had a lot of great ideas, this being one of them. Please feel free to reach out. Thank you to our, our podcast producers, the amazing Allison Westfall and Troy Stevens. Yay! Until next time, stay curious, stay connected, and remember, together we can. <laughs>